this lesson deals with special right triangles. Um, we're going to start looking at the, the first one is going to be 45, 45, 90 tri uh, right triangle. And what that means is that um, I have a triangle, and obviously one of them is 90 degrees. We'll say that one's 90 degrees. And then uh, because these two angles right here are the, same, are the same measure, that's 45 and say 45, that means that um, it's an isosceles right triangle, which means these two right here are the same. Okay. So um, kind of use Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. If I let this be A, that means this side has to be A. And if we want the relationship for, or the, the measure of this hypotenuse, using Pythagorean theorem, what we would have is we have A squared plus A squared is equal to something, our C squared. We're going to figure out what C is. Okay. Um, so this would give me just A squared plus A squared. That's going to give me 2A squared. Okay, so I'd have 2a squared is equal to c squared. Um, remember that we can take the square root to figure out what these would be. Okay, um, So here the square and the square root would cancel out. Here what I would have is I would have the square root of 2 times the square root of a squared. I can factor those apart separately since I have multiplication here. The square root of a squared is just a, so I have the square root of 2 times a. So that would be my hypotenuse, would be that. So the relationship for these is that if I have some length a for the legs, the hypotenuse is always going to be a times the square root of 2. Now, so looking at this example for the 45, 45, 90, what we want to do is um, set these up. If this is 45, that's 90. That means this other one over here has to be 45 degrees as well. Now there is a pattern and some people can see it this way if they draw a table. But we have the 45, 45, and the 90. Okay, The 45 is always going to be across the two legs. And we usually, what we do is we kind of give those values um, some letter. We're going to use A in this case. Okay, So we would have A, A, and then this would be A square root of 2. So this side right here is going to be a square root of 2. Okay. Now according to the picture, since um, my 8, or my a is 8, that tells me these two sides right here are 8. And all we do have to do for the hypotenuse is substitute the 8 in place of the a. So my answer is a square root, 8 square root of 2. All right. So here's another version of this, or a different problem with the same 45, 45, 90. And I know it's 45, 45, 90 because these two sides are both labeled X, which means that the sides are congruent, which means these angles have to be congruent. So they both have to be 45. Okay. Now, if you want, we can make that table. We have the 45, 45, and 90. Okay. And we're going to use X, X, and X for it's a 2 for this. Okay. So looking at the diagram here, um, these are my x's. This side up here is going to be x squared root of 2 because it's across the right angle. So, what I have is 5 square root of 2 here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these two equal to each other. So, I have x square root of 2 is equal to 5 square root of 2. And if I'm solving for x, I'm going to divide both sides by the square root of 2. Square root of 2 over square root of 2 is just 1. So x is equal to um, 5 square root of 2 divided by square root of 2. Again, those two factor out. And so x is just 5. Okay, so the side length here is going to be 5. We're going to derive the 30-60-90 triangle, or the formula for the 30-60-90 triangle. And so what we do is we start by drawing an equilateral triangle. I can draw one. All right. And if it's equilateral, that means all the sides are the same. It also means all the angles are the same. So we got a 60, 60, and 60. Okay. Now, to get this 30-60-90, what we do is we kind of cut... We cut this triangle in half so that we split this 60 
in half. So we have a 30 here, and this side gets cut in half. So to get this 30, 60, 90 triangle formula, what we do is we let these sides be 2x. Or let's do a. And we let this side be 2a, so that means this side's 2a, and this side's 2a. So what happens is when I split this in half, I get an a here and an a here. So then um, when I cut it, I want this height right here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of ignore this part of the triangle. And I just want to focus on this. So I have that h squared plus a squared is equal to 2a squared using the Pythagorean theorem. So h squared plus a squared is going to be equal to 4a squared. Then I'm going to subtract a squared from both sides. So that tells me h squared is equal to 3a squared. Okay, now to solve this, remember that I have to take the square root of both sides to cancel out the exponent. So I'm left with h is equal to the square root of 3 times the square root of a squared. Remember I can do that because this operation that joins these two is multiplication. So um, the h... I can take out, the h becomes a times the square root of 3. Because the square root of a squared is just a, uh, the square root of 3 cannot be reduced. That is in simplest form. So this right here becomes a square root of 3. Okay. So the pattern of the formula for the 30, 60, 90 across the 30 becomes a, because that's the smallest side. Across the 60 is a square root of 3, and across the 90, the hypotenuse is 2a. Right, so here's our example. Um, they gave us this side right here is the 9. We want to find the two values x and y. So uh, what we got to do is we got to kind of label these across. So across the 30, that's my x. Across the uh, 60, that's where our 9 goes. And then across the 90 is our y value that we're trying to solve for. Okay, so what we got to do is we got to set the 9 equal to the x square root of 3. Okay, so we start with 9 is equal to x times the square root of 3. So we got to divide both sides by the number for next to the coefficient, the number with the x, which is going to be square root of 3. And that goes to 1. And so x is going to equal 9 over the square root of 3. Okay, but we can't have the square root, we can't have a square root, a radical in the denominator. So what we got to do is we got to multiply by a 1, or special 1. What we want to do is we want to fix it to get the square root out of the denominator. And the trick on this is that we use that number, whatever denominator we have, and we multiply top and bottom by that square root number. Okay, so what happens is the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 ends up just being 3. Okay. And then the 9 times the square root of 3, those two just kind of go together since the 9 doesn't have a square root in it. Okay, but here we can actually reduce that. We can factor that 9 divided by 3 is just going to give me um, 3 square roots of 3. I can factor out a 3 out of these. And so I would just have 3 square roots of 3. So this x side here, I can replace that with 3 square roots of 3. Okay, now the y is 2 times my x. So it's going to be very important to always figure out what this x is first. Since now we know that it is 3 square roots of 3. Now all I have to do for that is I'm going to set y equal to 2 times x, which is going to be our 3 square roots of 3. Okay. Now um, since 2 and the 3 are the numbers that don't have a radical on them, uh, those are the numbers that get multiplied. The square root of 3 just kind of tags along. So this ends up being 6 square roots of 3. Okay, so x we got 3 square roots of 3. y ends up being 6 square roots of 3.